Have you ever been curious about how to effectively utilize and exercise all of the wonderful looping features inside of Ableton, whether it's to create ideas in the studio in a more dynamic, flowed way, or whether it's for live performance? In this video, we're gonna dive deep into everything you need to know to effectively utilize live looping inside Ableton. Hey yo, it's Alex from MetaMind Music, and as always with this channel, it's my mission to help musicians produce themselves by developing their mindset, expanding their creativity, and connecting to their inner artist in a deeper way. And in this video, I really want to dive deep into just going over the foundations of using Session View and live looping inside of Ableton, because looping is one of the main ways that you can make music in Ableton, which is why it looks so different than most other DAWs, and it's one of the features that really stand it apart from everything else. And the beauty of this is that you can really create a lot of cool ideas and quickly test ideas against each other all while they're looping live and really create music in a really dynamic way. And of course, the other big feature of this is that you can utilize live looping and really use Ableton as an extension of your live performance in any way, shape, form that you can imagine. And it is super powerful to actually bring in the computer, bring in looping, bring in effects, all of this awesome stuff into live performances. So let's actually go over the basics of live looping. So if you're not familiar with Ableton yet, and this looks completely alien to you, then I highly encourage you to check out my Ableton Master Series where I go over all the nooks and crannies of really understanding Ableton at a foundational level. So if you wanna check that out to get familiar with the software, I'll link it in the card above. So I'm gonna assume that we understand some basic stuff about Ableton, but we're just going to cater this video towards looping specifically. All right, so we already know that in Ableton, we can record clips, right? We have all these different tracks. Uh, right now I have four tracks going on and they all have a different sound, all right? And I can select these tracks as well as record enable them. And that will allow me to record clips inside these little clip slots that we see, right? On every track, you see that there's these little slots that I can actually navigate to different clip slots here, right? These are all containers for what are called clips, right? So basically they're just musical ideas, they're loops, all synonymous terms, right? And that is the power of Session View is that you'll see that we have all of these clip slots lined up on these different tracks that we have. And we can record a bunch of different loops on the same track and play around with these different loops uh, playing together versus something more traditional in DAWs, which is the arrangement view or the timeline view, where you're just going on a timeline from left to right. Uh, session view in Ableton is actually dealing with a bunch of loops per track playing at the same time. All right, and the beauty of working with clips in session view is that uh, we can work with audio loops, we can work with MIDI loops, we can change the timing of these clips, we can change the length, as well as a plethora of amazing options and features that we can play with per clip, which is super powerful. All right, so the first thing to really understand if we're gonna be playing with looping is that unlike a traditional looper, if you played with a guitar pedal or some outboard gear that is a looper, uh, where you're basically creating loops on the fly and you're deciding the timing on the fly, um, Ableton differs from that in that everything that we are playing with is synced to the master clock or the tempo, right? So if I turn on this tempo up here, I just click here to turn on the tempo and I press play, we're gonna hear a click track. And with this click track, you'll notice that there's a beat that is accented, right? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? And that accented beat is what is called the downbeat, which is extremely important to internalize. And we're working in four, four timing. So we're just counting to four, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the one is the downbeat. And this is extremely important to understand because everything that we do in Ableton in terms of session view and looping is going to follow this clock, okay? All right, so I'm gonna select this melodic track. I kind of got this idea in mind, which is at a certain tempo. Two, three, four, one, two, three. So I'm gonna tap that in. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. So something around this tempo. 
All right, and this is where the power of MIDI controllers come in, is that especially if you have MIDI controllers that are created specifically for Ableton, a lot of the features that you'll see inside Ableton will be at your fingertips, which makes it super powerful. So basically I was just hitting that tap tempo button to get the tempo that I had in my head, and I can turn on and off the metronome here. You'll see that that button goes on and off. And now we can simply record a clip by selecting the track that we want to record. So I'm going to record this melodic track and making sure that we record enable it. Okay, I'm pressing that with my MIDI controller, but you can simply just click on a track and record enable it. And then if you do that, your MIDI controller will be playing that sound. So now I'm playing my bass. If I want to play my melodic instrument, we'll go over here, we'll hit record enable, and now we're playing this instrument. Okay, so if we wanted to record a loop, all we would do is with this track record enabled is hit record. hit record and I played the part, I had to hit the record button once again to close off this loop. All right, so before we go deeper into clips and recording clips, um, let's quickly talk about number two, which is global launch quantization. And that's just a big fancy way of saying how much time is it going to take for a clip to start playing when you launch it or how long is it going to take before when you hit record that it actually starts recording. So let me demonstrate this to you real quick. So right here is your global launch quantization right beside your metronome. And right now it's set to one bar, which is pretty much the default. And I keep it there for most of the time, but you can play around with all of these different divisions of time, which is amazing. So with one bar selected, if I play our clock without triggering the clip, we're just gonna hear the metronome. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Um, if I trigger this clip, it will start on the next downbeat after I've pressed the button. All right, so let's do that real quick. So one, two, three, four, one, press the clip, three, four. Now we go two, three, four, one, two, three. So all that global launch quantization means is how long is it gonna take for a clip to launch after you've triggered a clip or stop a clip or start recording. So we can do this with recording as well. So if I just play this clock, Okay, and I, if I want to record a new clip here, I can simply hit this next clip slot on my MIDI controller. And if I hit it, you'll notice that it only starts recording on the next downbeat. Okay, so let's try that. One, two, three, four, one, hit the clip slot. Three, four, two, three, one, two, three, four. Right, so we're recording a new clip, and you'll notice that it'll keep recording until I hit stop. Right? So I have to actually hit stop to stop recording. And if we wanted to change the length of this clip afterwards, then you can just click this top bracket and drag it back to whatever length you want. So let's say we just wanted this to be two bars. All right, so let's move on to number three, which is recording a clip. So again, whenever you're recording a clip, or triggering a clip, they will all synchronize based on your clock and the global launch quantization setting you have. So right now we're set to one bar. So if I go ahead and select the drum kit, okay, and record enable the drum kit, now we can hear our drum kit. Um, if I hit record, the metronome will start and we'll play one bar before we start recording the drums. All right, so I'll hit record, it'll be one, two, three, four, and then on the one, on the next downbeat, we're gonna start recording drums, okay? And I can simply record a new clip by selecting a clip slot on a track that's selected and record enabled. Then I can just go ahead and start recording by hitting this on my MIDI controller. If you don't have a MIDI controller mapped, you can just click this little circle here and it will record a new clip. All right, so let's go ahead and do that and demonstrate how the quantization functions with recording a clip. All right, so let's go. One, two, three. All right, you'll notice that as I recorded that, it's still recording. So now I'm gonna hit stop. 
when you start recording a clip, it will keep recording until you tell it to stop recording. So you might have already done this and your workflow might be like going back here and dragging this clip to be the right length. And now we have, let me quantize it. A perfect loop. That's great. You can always go in and adjust your loops and make sure they're the right length and the right timing. However, it can be very powerful to actually stop the loop in real time and kind of loop more musically um, in the flow state, right? And this is why having a MIDI controller of some sort that you can have your hands on to stop the recording process in real time can be invaluable to keeping you in that flow. So let's actually delete that first clip. I'll go back here, select it, delete. And now when I hit record, I'm going to record the same drum beat, but I'm going to make sure to hit the record button before the downbeat of the end of my clip, and then it'll make a nice loop. All right. And this is something that you'll want to practice because the more you can get the timing down of recording loops and making sure that they're all playing in time, the more you'll stay in flow state and really get all the benefits of using session view. All right, so let's go back to our drum kit. All right, so this time when we record, I'll make sure to hit stop record before the next downbeat to create an even loop for the sequence that we're trying to create. All right, so let's do it. You could change this to none, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend, but now whenever I trigger a clip, it will be instant. Okay. There'll be no delay uh, behind when I hit the clip and when it launches. All right. So number four is just the typical workflow with instruments that you'll typically want to play with. If you're creating new ideas, getting in flow state, really having fun with session view, or even doing a live performance, you're typically going to want to have something that covers the rhythm, the bass, some melody and maybe some dynamics, right? So we have a drum kit, a bass, we have this melodic instrument, this kind of spaced out roads, and then I have like this textured wavetable pad thing um, on these tracks. And it's a really good idea to get a workflow down that at least has all of those bases covered so you can actually jump between all these things and find musical ideas real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and record a super simple bass line and maybe play around with that pad texture on track four and give it a go. So I'm going to select our bass track. Here's our bass sound. And yeah, just record a simple clip. And while this is looping, you can also record into new clips if you wanted. So let's maybe add some hi-hats on our drum beat. All right. So Right, so number five is actually playing around with your clip settings as well as potentially empty clips. So for example, if we go into, let's say our pad here, I can actually hit shift command M or you can alternatively right click and insert empty MIDI clip here. But with this, you'll notice that we have a clip here that has no information. It's just an empty clip. And the powerful thing about this is that you can set the length of whatever clip you want ahead of time, right? Right. So if we go into this clip menu here, you'll see that we have a bunch of settings related to the clip. So let's say we wanted this clip to be longer, right? We could go ahead and go, let's say we wanted eight bars, hit eight, boom. Now our clip is eight bars long. And the powerful thing about this is exactly what I demonstrated with 
recording the hi-hats on that drum part is that you can just record into this clip and play when you're ready and not be worrying about having to punch in and punch out in time to make sure that everything stays together. So if you wanted to record parts or if you're setting up a live performance that you know you're gonna record a part for a specific set amount of time, you can set up these empty clips and really exercise the potential of not having to worry about punching in and out. So let me show you that. Final thing I want to point out is that it's well worth looking at this clip settings menu, right? Because we can actually change these parameters. We can change the length. We can change the start time. Let's say I didn't want the loop to start there because I started recording here. Maybe this is the start, right? So I can click and drag this little playhead and you'll notice that the start and end setting changes in this clip menu, right? Now we're starting on bar seven. So now when I hit play, this loop is gonna start at bar seven and then just keep looping around since that's where I started recording and that's where the idea starts. You can also turn off this loop setting where when you launch a clip, it'll only play once through. So let's say I wanted this clip to just play once through and then not continue looping over and over. You can toggle on and off this loop setting and this is super powerful for when you want to just maybe have one shots or throw in samples, right? And another thing we can look at within this clip menu is you can hit this little arrow and get a few more settings. And I'm not gonna go into follow actions and the randomness and all that, super powerful. Maybe I'll make another video about that. Uh, let me know if you wanna see that down in the comments. But if you go to here, we can see that each clip has its own global quantize setting, all right? So if I go in here, I could actually change the quantize to none. So now when I trigger this particular clip, the one we just recorded, the one that's right here, it won't be quantized to the master clock, right? It'll be whenever I hit it and it'll only play once through. All right, so with this yellow clip set to looping off and the trigger set to no quantize, now we can actually play this clip freely and it will only play once through and won't continue looping, all right? So let's actually demonstrate that Let's start throwing in these other tracks and then we'll throw in that yellow clip with our pad and whenever we want, and it won't be synced to the clock on the downbeat, it'll be whenever we hit the clip and it will only play once through. All right, so let's go ahead and start with these keys. All right, so let's start with the keys. All right, keep in mind that anytime I trigger a clip, anytime I launch a clip, it's gonna start on the downbeat. settings per clip and really have a dynamic and expressive performance with live looping in session view per clip. So it's amazing. And hey, if you're just getting started with music production and feeling completely overwhelmed by the whole process, or if you've been at this a while, but are having trouble finishing tracks, getting them to the finish line, or hey, if you just wanna get a glimpse inside my personal workflow, I've created a super easy to follow seven step framework that helps you go from your very first ideas all the way to an arrangement, a finished edit, mix, master, all in an easy to follow process that's super dynamic and intuitive. And it's super handy to have around the studio as a printout to help you get to the finish line. So if you're interested in grabbing that, you can grab it below this video. And that wraps it up for this video. I hope it helped clarify how live looping works with Ableton and some ways to think about it. And let me know, do you use Session View a lot with Ableton? Do you use looping in general? Or are you still dipping your toes inside this workflow? And hey, let me know, do you wanna go deeper inside looping? Because there's a lot you can do with Session View and Ableton's built-in looper and clips and dummy clips and all sorts of cool MIDI stuff like launching MIDI automation with 
dummy clips and stuff like that. So if you're into learning more about that, let me know in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to make more videos about this since it's so fun and so powerful for your music production workflow. All right, so that wraps it up for this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna stay in tune for the next MetaMind Music Transmission, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So see you later.